How to use Tape Machine 440 by IK Multimedia IK Multimedia made one of the best analog tape emulations. In fact they made four, but for this quick tutorial we will be looking at the Tape Machine 440. Tape Machine 440 the Ampex 440B series was originally built in the 1960s. It had a truly analog sound that was used for mixing and mastering. When we think of warm analog tape machines, the Ampex 440B stands out as a classic. Let's get into the controls. Input Level The input level sets the level of the signal going into the module. The input, repro, slider. With input engaged, the signal passes only through the input and output electronic stages of the recorders, bypassing the tape. Depending on how the recorder is designed, the input path can sound very very similar to the plug-in input, or slightly more colored. Set on repro, the signal passes through the entire analog recording system. First, the signal travels from the input, then to the recording amplifier, then recording head. From here it is sent to the tape, then playback head, and then the playback preamplifier. Finally, the signal is sent to the output stage. The true stereo switch. Even a perfectly aligned tape machine will have a slightly different level, EQ, and distortion quality between the left and right channels. This is good and part of the analog recording aesthetic. If a perfectly identical left and right signal is desired, then simply disable the true stereo switch. Now let's look at the tape formula section. This selects between the four available tape formulas. Each tape formula has its own characteristic and sonic personality. This dynamic modeling is important in order to have an even broader palette of sounds. Here are the details of each tape. 250 This was modeled after the 3M Scotch 250 audio recording tape. It delivers a warm tone with slightly more distortion and saturation than the other formulas included in the package. 456 This was modeled after the Ampex 456 high output mastering tape which was used very often by many studios. It offers a warm, round tone, with a slight touch of saturation that greatly responds to the recording level. This saturation was desirable, and is what we look for in a tape emulation. GP9 This is modeled after the Quantigy GP9 Grand Master Platinum. It's very punchy, great for rock, and excellent for high-quality analog recordings. 499 Modeled after the Ampex 499 Grandmaster Gold Studio Mastering Audio Tape. This tape is designed to handle a great amount of level with minimal distortion and compression. It also exhibits a high frequency added definition that makes it perfect for printing somewhat more transparent recordings, while still maintaining an analog sound. Now let's look at the tape speed section. 
tape speed selects the speed in inches per second IPS, of the tape transport between 7.5 ips and 15 ips. The higher speed gives you more fidelity, and the lower speed delivers a warmer, rounder tone. Next, transport modeling. This precisely models the behavior of the mechanical transport. Small irregularities in the movement of the tape create various degrees of sonic alteration to the audio program, especially between the two channels. Keep it on for some analog goodness. In case a more transparent performance is needed, you can disable it. Auto Calibration These tape machines are calibrated by default. They are at their factory calibration, but it is possible to edit the calibration parameters, as you like. With the auto calibration, it is possible to reset the edits and go back to the factory calibration. Next, Record Bias. This control adjusts the amount of bias in the recorded signal. Ideal bias voltage settings provide maximum sensitivity and low distortion. Intentionally overbiasing is a common technique to produce a warmer, gently saturated sound. Underbiasing can be used to nicely boost the high frequencies, in a truly unique way and add distortion, and other nonlinear effects. Now let's look at the record level. When in repro mode, it adjusts the level of the recorded signal, after the input. Record HF EQ. This adjusts the high frequency shelving added to the recorded signal on the tape. The play level. When in repro mode, it adjusts the level of the recorded signal, before the output, and after the entire tape. It is used to calibrate the machine. The Play HF EQ. This adjusts the high frequency shelving added to the playback signal from the tape. The Play LF EQ. This adjusts the low frequency shelving added to the playback signal from the tape. Output Level The Output Level control determines the Output Level of the Module. The On Switch This activates, or bypasses, the processing altogether. Reset When this is set, it returns the settings of all of the parameters back to their default. Now you know the functions of the controls. Analog tape was often pushed a little, in order to achieve some desirable saturation. IK Multimedia did a great job of recreating the warm distortion, and harmonics of not only this classic machine, but also the different tapes used. The default settings work very well, but don't be afraid to experiment. Different material will require different settings. It's all a matter of personal production, style, and taste. Thanks for watching this short tutorial. We have many more available, and release more weekly. We welcome you to join us and subscribe. Thanks, and happy music making.